Okay, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Access Energy 2 interview. In today's video, in today's interview, I'm back with uh, Newman Hussein. Newman, how are we? Very good, thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming on the channel, mate. You're very welcome. Great stuff. And so, am I right in saying you're a 34 year old super featherweight who's 2 and 0? That's right. Yep, great. Okay, and so if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you're doing you like the video, and let's get straight into it. So, I'm going to start off with a question which I always like to start off with. Why did you start boxing? I started boxing about 10 years ago, maybe 10, 9, 10, 11 years ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit vague because I walked into a gym which was doing uh, primarily MMA. Okay. So I started off doing a bit of kickboxing, um, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, etc. <clears throat> and boxing. But then I realized that my main focus was like MMA. I wanted to do MMA, but then... Like doing all those different martial arts in one go, it's very difficult to improve. Like on, uh, like how you can't master four different arts. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm there trying to learn how to wrestle, learn how to uh, grapple and um, kickbox and boxing. Now I was like, you know what? I need to put my focus on one martial art, kind of master that and then move on. And then I kind of started off with kickboxing, but then realized my hands needed a lot of work, so I was. I was solely focused on boxing. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, I've been trying to master boxing ever since. And like, you know, one thing led to another. The guy who was doing the boxing there kind of says to me, oh, I think you should do a couple of like unlicensed white collar competitions. I was like, cool. Um, so then he signed me up for a few, did it, enjoyed it. And I was like, again, just each time was just like, I want to do this again. Mm -hmm. want to get better, etc." And then that led me. So I did that for about three, four years. That led me to the amateurs, walked into an amateur gym and then realised there was a difference between yeah. unlicensed and an amateur. Mm. And there's like a hierarchy and they don't really respect one another. Mm. And then I was like, do you know what? I, I got to show them I can mingle with the amateur boys. Then I did the amateurs for like four or five years, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed, learned a lot from, met a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then off that, I ended up turning professional. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. And so would you say you're kind of whole focus is now fully on boxing. Absolutely. I mean, I've never, like, I enjoy watching the other uh, martial arts like wrestling, jiu-jitsu, etc. If, if people are doing it mm -hmm. in front of me, I'm happy to watch it. Um, but I wouldn't... Go back to I that. don't... Oh, well, yeah, I don't know if I... Like, to partake in it, it's, it's a bit tricky because, for example, if you jump in and you do jiu-jitsu, very risky snapping something causing injuries, etc., etc. So, um, anyway, I'm just, uh, I think I would go back to some of that stuff later on, okay. just for fun, not co not competitively. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, with Jiu-Jitsu, I think you could start later. Yeah. It's got a longer lifespan with, with boxing. Like, once your time is up, it's up. Yeah. And, like, given my age, I don't have a lot of time left in <laughs> boxing anyway, so I really want a fast track get cracking mm -hmm. yes definitely and so far you're doing very well on the professional side of things of course 2-0 and oh, beaten and so out of these two professional fights you've had which one would you say you've performed your best in oh good question I think uh, so my uh, possibly my pro debut if I had to pick one out of the two I think the only reason I say that is I felt I felt a bit better in terms of um, like physically myself because of, so the second bout I had was same day weighing mm -hmm. um, and then weighing in the day before 100% makes you feel a lot more like physically mm -hmm. there you know like mm -hmm. you've, you're rest, you've eaten you drank you've rested where on the same day you weigh in and then you're literally trying to eat and drink as much as you can mm -hmm. and then you've done that and then now you're like you're kind of like zoned out and you're like oh I'm just, I just I just want to do nothing but yeah. You got a box, mm. so I think that that was my mistake. But um, whatever, like yeah. I, ultimately, I, I don't think I lost a round in either bout. I think I boxed well, given the opponent. It's just my second bout. I felt like I could have, I could have done more. Mm. Uh, had I been able to do it again, I think I tried to press the action a bit more and just like show a bit more to my arsenal as opposed to just like trying to cruise to the win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's fair. And so, well, I mean, you said in the prior rounds you've been around kind of uh, 
bo- or attacking kind of sports for a while now, about 10 years is what you said. And so yeah. uh, what would you say is your main motivation at the moment? Competition. Mm. I, for me, it's all about competition. Like, of course, everybody wants the titles, the belts, you know, etc. money, uh, you know, likes, views, blue tick, etc. Right. For me, ultimately, it comes down to competition. Mm. I think... I think I'm the best at my weight and like I want to if you think you're the best at the same weight as me let's see who's better yeah. you know that's it for me ultimately it comes down to competition mm-hmm. so like I don't know I could watch somebody who's at my weight and I'd be like oh you know they could do everything right but I feel oh I could beat you mm-hmm. and it's not malicious it's not because I you know I don't think they're great it's because they're good I want to be in the ring with them and I want to see what I would do in how they will deal with what I offer, etc. So for me, primarily it's competition. Um, I, I guess all boxers enjoy punching people to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, primarily for me it's competition. Mm-hmm. Definitely, that's great. And so would you kind of say that you're always wanting the toughest test and you'll never back down from fighting someone? Yes, but I think even saying that, it has to be uh, at the right time. Okay. Uh, Again, for me, I don't have much time. So, I, again, you, you don't rush. You got to take it. When I sorry, when I say at the right time, I mean. So you take the toughest opponent, but you, it has to be on even playing ground. Mm. So, like for example, you know, if they tomorrow decided for me to box somebody who's ranked number two, you know, one, two, three, four, mm. at my weight category, as long as I get enough time to prepare, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So I think to take fights at short notice mm. it's part of the sport yeah. but i think you've got to be careful because like so i learned this for me in the amateurs where i've taken fights like a week before you know mm. uh, four days before two days before etc and what you find yourself doing is if you haven't had a proper time to prepare you know you just focus on getting rid of the weight getting into the ring and then you're not able to give your best account of yourself Mm. so again for me like I say because it's competition I want to give the best account of myself so I'd like to if I could have the right amount of time frame where I'm able to prepare then I'm more than happy to box anybody mm-hmm. yes definitely that's, that's a good mindset a smart mindset and so yeah, yeah yeah and so I mean you said that you're wanting to be a bit kind of quite active in the sport and so when do you have a possible date of when you'll be back fighting again 4th of March so 4th of March which is just under 4 weeks I believe mm-hmm. uh, in Colchester mm-hmm. there's a show um, I'm scheduled to be on that mm-hmm. so um, yeah I'm literally in camp now and I'm looking forward to it mm-hmm. great stuff and so how's preparations been going for this fight yeah it's been going good actually uh, so I started camp and then a week later I went out to Miami mm-hmm. for a family holiday mm-hmm. and then it was only right that we chucked in sparring Mm -hmm. and um the days i didn't spar i ran so it it was actually worked out really well because over there the sparring is incredible Mm -hmm. uh you get different looks um the guys are more experienced than me so i think i sparred with a guy who was like 10 and 0 six knockouts he's had over 150 amateur fights he he spars like javante davis richard cormay yeah like He's like, and he's himself is getting ready to defend his title, mm-hmm. I believe, like next week. Mm-hmm. So he's slightly heavy, he's lightweight, but again, like to, to be able to go there and to get rounds with him, fantastic, you know, mm-hmm. get a different look. So yeah, that was that was really fun. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely, that's great. And so for anybody who might be wanting to come and watch this upcoming fight of yours, what would you say makes you interesting as a fighter? Uh, good question. So me personally, I like to, I like to express myself in the ring. I feel like it's it's, it's like uh, it's like dancing. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's not just about getting in there and just like oh, just throw punches and defend, etc. I like to, I like to box, and but I like to make it look stylish, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. I like so for me the whole. If you look at any elite sportsmen if you take your footballers you know basketball players uh, boxers MMA fighters the best and the elite guys like make it look easy Mm. they make it look effortless almost you see so 
for me when I'm in the ring I like to I like to be a bit flashy it's not personal I'm not trying to uh, well maybe in the moment I'm trying to take the piss out of the guy to get him out of his comfort yeah, etc yeah. but for me I'm just getting in my element I'll mm -hmm. I box slightly with my hands low quick reflexes I like to counter I like to I like to put on a bit of a display mm -hmm. but it's not even for the crowd it's for me because mm -hmm. this is how I would want to box mm -hmm. I don't you know I like it, it suits me, it comes natural to me. And um, I, if you watch me spar or even in the ring, it's I'm genuinely, ha I'm trying to have a good time. I'm having a good time. I'll talk to my opponent if I don't get told off by the ref, um, etc. But again, it's not like they can take it personal. Mm -hmm. It's not personal for me. I've gone to gyms, we sparred, and I've ended up talking to opponents in the spa. And they've taken it personal after. And I've had to go back to them and say, listen, I wasn't trying to, uh, disrespect you etc like in the in there i gotta get you off your game i'm doing what i have to do this is how i get in my element so don't take it personal mm -hmm. uh, so but yeah that's that's my my thing my thing is is clever boxing mm -hmm. is stylish boxing if you want uh, i let people be the judge of that but i like i like to be slick if that makes sense because mm -hmm. i think i feel like it suits me and it comes natural to me mm -hmm. as opposed to you've got other fighters who are a bit more aggressive uh, you know, Mike Tyson. Mm. He's, he's nothing pretty, maybe, but like, you know, he's just there trying to destroy you. Mm. Where I like to, I like to, I like to enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely, that's great. And so, I mean, this kind of like flashy style that you speak about. Some might argue that it's uh, it's a little bit more dangerous. But would you possibly say maybe maybe you don't think it? But would you possibly say that because of your age, you're going into fights? and not feeling the pressure as much because you've not got as much to lose? Mm, no. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, for me, funny enough, um, I've said this to, I think I've spoken to a guy uh, who's done a podcast with me last week, and mm -hmm. he was talking about, actually about uh, like fear mm -hmm. um, uh, in boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's part of his dissertation, etc. Anyway, I think a lot of it comes from fear. Like, mm -hmm. If you're slightly frightened, you you are your your senses are heightened, so you're like you react slightly quicker. Mm. You're able to do things naturally you might not be able to do, you know. Yeah. So something calming about the whole madness of danger. Mm. So for me, honestly, the more dangerous mm. situation I'm in, the better I slightly perform. Like because I'm sli I am worried. I'm worried. I don't want to get killed. I don't want to get hurt. But the reason again, like the whole dropping the hands is because I need to be relaxed. Mm. It doesn't matter how dangerous the situation is. If I'm not relaxed, I can't get my shots off. If I'm not relaxed, I can't move in and out quick. Can't get... Because the minute you kind of tense up and freeze, mm. everything gets harder. Yeah. So for me, it works. Like I wouldn't never dare to teach people, oh, box like this. Again, if you teach someone to box, hands up, etc., etc. It's a bit like driving. Mm. So I think I've used this analogy before. Say, when you're learning how to drive or you're teaching someone how to drive, you learn with two hands on the wheel and you look at every mirror, blind spots before you manoeuvre. The minute you get your licence, give it a year or two, you're driving with one hand on the wheel, yeah, you look at the mirrors, but you just instinctively know. So in order to break the rules, you kind of need to know the rules. Mm. So I do fundamentally respect the rules of boxing and like I understand, defend yourself at all time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I work like I won't have my hands down throughout the entire bout. That's stupid, mm. you know. Like there's moments you do it. There's the right moments. There's moments you'll have your both hands up, move your feet, etc., etc. Um, I, I naturally do what I feel is right in the ring. I see what's happening, observe, make an, and make a decision. I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't, in terms of, um, like, pressure, I don't think, I don't think a lot of fighters have pressure mm -hmm. the way they claim they have pressure. I think, like, yeah, I don't think a lot of people, you, you can't really be, oh, there's a lot of pressure on me. Someone like Campbell Hatton, Ricky Hatton's son, he's got pressure. Yeah. He's got to feel his dad's bo mm -hmm. boots, which he probably never will, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But, like, other fighters, there's no pressure. Like you, you put that on yourself. Mm. Like get in a ring and and, and perform. That's mm. what you do. Like if 
people feel like there's pressure on them because of X, Y, Z. I don't know. I, I think I don't think that's real pressure for me speaking. So yeah, I think for me personally, I perform better when I when I'm relaxed, when I'm uh, when I'm in my element, and my element is not to be stressed out. My element is not to 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 feel like oh there's so much pressure on me. of course you want to win of course you're nervous of course you're slightly concerned but you know you you can't be like oh you know there's so much pressure on me yeah. I, I mean for some people that works mm. personally speaking I don't feel, for me no it doesn't work there's no I don't feel like there's a huge amount of pressure. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yeah, that's good. It's a it's a very good mindset, and so well. I mean, in in some of your some of your previous answers, you've kind of spoke about how far you want to go in the sport, but you haven't specifically said a, a possible destination for you in the sport. What do you believe that is? That's a very good question. The, the, sorry, the only reason I have I, I can't really answer that. The only reason being is because with boxing, unfortunately, like it's it's very political. Mm. So, like, if you have to be signed to a certain person, or you have to you have to bring something to the table. It's not necessarily the best fight in the best. It's, you know, which two guys can we put on to fight one another that will generate the most revenue and we can capitalize, which I fully understand because it's a business. Mm. So in that regard, like, I, I honestly, I think if you ask any boxer, what would you like to kind of achieve? They'll all say, oh, I want to be a world champion. Um, for me, I think I want to be a bit more uh, realistic and say I will try to go through the traditional routes mm-hmm. and try to execute those before I start talking about world titles which is go for Southern Era uh, and then off that you would go for uh, English title British title etc and then once you can get those under your belt then you can potentially start talking about world titles mm-hmm. I think a lot of people now oh I want to be a world champion you've just dismissed three yeah, yeah. kind of belts which you should be concerned about mm. like there's good fighters in this country Definitely. so um for me if i can even get those three i'm happy but i do understand like um there is a whole like political side financial side media side tv rights etc i fully get that and it's what makes sense it's not necessarily like oh should we get so and so to fight so and so that'd be a fantastic fight right even now, we're waiting for what Errol Spence and um, yeah, Terence Crawford. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, there's so much. That's these are guys who should fight one yeah, another. Yeah. They're at the highest level. They will generate money, but even they can't. Mm. So, I do understand there's that side of it. So, I am realistic in that regard, but um, I don't ever cancel anything else. So I'm mm. like, you know what? We take it one uh, bow at a time, and we set small kind of goals to lead up to the big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there's no point talking about world titles if you can't, you know, get the Southern Era and then you can't get the English title, you can't get the British title, yeah. European. Why are you going for big fish? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. That's that's great. And so, I mean, I'm looking a bit wary of time, trying to not take up too much of your time. So I'll leave with this oh, no. question, which you always like to ask. Uh, and uh, that is, you've got a little bit of a platform here. Would you like to shout anything out? Um, follow me on uh, Newman. Mm-hmm. 007 Hussein uh, on Instagram. Um, yeah, if you can, come watch me on the 4th of uh, March in Colchester. I, this this time, I'm, I, you know, when I go out to box, I, I got put on a bit of a show in terms of, like, from my last performance. I just I just feel like we've had enough time to, to work on stuff and just, just have more fun now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's great stuff okay well thank you very much mate and uh, maybe a little bit further along down the line we can come back and do another interview no I would absolutely love that I think yeah would love to do that Let's, mm-hmm. so this year I'm hoping to have a very busy year mm-hmm. um, so yeah maybe next year or something touch base see where we at Mm-hmm. yes definitely okay great well thank you very much and if you are new around and you haven't subscribed please do so like if you do need like video and thanks for <laughs>